She's a real, authentic debutante. And she's all the way from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. The one and only, Miss Gloria Upson. to each and every one of you, I found the right hat. <laughs> this is Laura, Miss how are you? Oh, Mr. Oh. Rayna. Oh. <laughs> it's a highball round, shouldn't it? Oh. <laughs> Laura, everyone you tonight. Look, you look fabulous. Well, of course I do, Mr. Rayna. That hat is sensational. Isn't it fabulous? Oh, my God, the bag. Where did you get that bag? This bag is real Bengal tiger. You're kidding. No. Well, I heard that was an endangered species. Oh, not anymore. I got the last one. <laughs> but, Laura, but have you ever been to Provincetown before? I no, no, no. I never come up any higher than high on this court. I get a nosebleed. <laughs> well, it's true. Of course, what happened was this. Bunny Bixler and I. You remember my old friend, Bunny Bixler? Oh, gosh, Bunny and I have been old friends. We were wee devs of five. We came out together. Well, mums and dads have no idea how far. Anyway. Well, so what do you think? Oh, I understand you have a friend in uh, Hyannis. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. Who is it? I got a phone call from Michael Campbell and Douglas Payne, and they said, Gloria, you've just got to get up here to P-Town and save Hal and David's show. <laughs> I said, well, I do it all the time. So I came to P-Town, and I found out that one of my oldest girlfriends, Muriel Pugh, <laughs> lives now in Hyannisport. So I called her, and I said, Muriel, I'm coming down to see you. I grabbed the cab, raced down to Hyannisport, I rang the doorbell myself. She answered the door, and there she stood. No dress. No makeup and no hair. I said, Muriel, I have got to have a tasteful triple. Take me to the nearest country club. Well, we hopped on the back of her Harley Davidson, which is a bitch in this hat, and raced down to her favorite country club, the Pied Piper. Well, there they were. All those girls were dancing so close together you couldn't get a credit card between them. I said, Muriel, I've got to teach these girls how to lead and follow. I went straight to the discharge and I said, Miss, would you please play a cha-cha-cha? She said, I don't have a cha-cha-cha. I said, well, I always carry a copy of Xavier Cougat here in my bag. In five minutes, I had Sheena Easton on the floor. And she was good, too. Oh, isn't this gala tonight? Isn't this gala? Boy, uh, I saw you on the Phil Donahue show. Did you see, Did you see me on the Phil Donahue show? Well, I just got a glimpse of you, though. Oh, you were watching the Chippendales dancers, weren't you? <laughs> Everybody forgot about moi. What were you doing? Well, I was plugging my latest book. You write? Miss Dorada, didn't you know I was literate? No. <laughs> Listen, I love books. I think they're so decorative, don't you? <laughs> so what's the book? Well, you all remember my first bestseller. Remember my first bestseller? It was called View from a Deb's Closet <laughs> or Coming Out in Style. <laughs> now, my latest book is called Dressing for the Nuclear Holocaust <laughs> or Going Out in Style. Oh, God, what a fabulous idea. Yes, I have it. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Thank you. Yo, I just have one question. Who's going to have time when the bomb drops to change what they even drag? You know, what do you mean? Well, they say World War III is only going to last seven minutes. I can have you dressed in three. <laughs> I've been watching too much TV, Gloria. Oh, that awful television movie two seasons ago. Did you see that the day after? Did you see that? The fashions were horrible, weren't they? <laughs> and the wigs weren't even finished. <laughs> I'll wait for you. <laughs> well, of course, it did prove one thing conclusively. It is much better to perish in a nuclear holocaust than live in Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> Gloria. But you have time to tell us about
about the book? Well, of course, I'd love to tell you about the book, but I'll need a little atomic cocktail music. Oh, okay. how about a cha-cha? Oh, how about tea for two? I love that. Oh, I know that one. Do that. Step, touch, one, and cha, cha, cha. Well, now these nuclear holocausts are very complicated, so let's start with the hat. This hat contains a solid concrete drum shield. And I have got a closet at home that is stuffed with Chanel dresses made out of nothing but spun stainless steel. This is the first time I've ever recommended to any debutante she pull her dress up over her head. Now, in these nuclear holocausts, the light is very bright and very hot. So, <laughs> Let's discuss makeup. <laughs> now, I recommend Clown White for its reflective <laughs> Well, let's face it. When you run from your P.A. dot hair to your bombshell toir, you can be burned absolutely black. <laughs> now, if you are black, I still recommend Clown White for its reflective properties. Just tell everybody in the bombshell who do your party imitation of Diane Carroll. <laughs> Now the bomb shelter, lots of white wicker furniture, tiki torches, pick up a little generator, a little record player, lots of Rusty Warren party records. And next to the cello does the cha cha cha. And don't forget to pick up my latest recording. It's called What I Did for Gloves. And the flip side, Night of the Living Dead. I'll work on that one. All right. I have one question for you. Now, what do you do if you don't have a bomb shelter? I mean, you've got the hat on and the dress on. But where do you go? Oh, no bomb shelter. Let me think a minute now. Oh, I got it. I got it. Run outside. Hop in your Rolls Royce. Put the gray Poupon mustard in the glove compartment. <laughs> Roll all your windows up and have your chauffeur drive you into the swimming pool. What a gallant way to go out. Now, what do you do if you don't have a swimming pool or a bomb shelter? Or a chauffeur? Or a Rolls Royce? How Dickens. <laughs> Get yourself a Quaalude and a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Go out on the sidewalk. Take the Quaalude, drink the Jack Daniels, and kiss your ass goodbye. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I forget, before I forget, spray your entire body with Pam. That way, when they find you, you won't stick to the stopwatch. <laughs> Delta, 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 Bren Mawr, 1958. <laughs> the only other two contestants were Barbara Britton <laughs> and Sylvia Platt. For talent, Sylvia baked casserole, but the wrong thing in the oven. Anyway. <laughs> here it is. What else? My way. <laughs> Apparently flown by. And I guess we reached that final curtain, my friend. I'll state my case. I'll state it clear. Because I'm certain you've got to plan each hat and glove, each Chanel suit for each occasion. And take a tip from little glory. A deaf's best friend is a closet. Especially practically live in yours like I do. And more. <laughs> Much more than this. Wear it my way. For what? What is a death? What has she got? If not a glow, then she has not. And through all, when there was doubt, I took it off and rinsed it out. The record show. 
from hat to hose. 